everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Right around the corner, we have one of the biggest releases of the baseball card season coming out. It is 2020 Bowman Draft, one of my personal favorite sets of the year, and I have spent the better part of a week researching the 2020 MLB draft to figure out the top 10 prospects that I'm going to be targeting in this year's set. So sit back, buckle in, because here comes the top 10 prospects that you should be targeting in 2020 Bowman Draft. All right, so I'm super excited about the 2020 Bowman draft release. I think it's going to be a great set. And this is my 10 prospects that I'm going to be targeting for this set. So before we begin, I want to go into a little bit about Bowman draft real quick and how I came up with this list. First of all, if you are not familiar with Bowman draft, it is the third and final installment of the 2020 Bowman line. It Features many, but possibly not all, of the 2020 draft class, among other prospects. So you'll see Wander Franco in there. You'll see Jason Dominguez, among other names. But the important part of this is it is the first cards of players that were selected in the 2020 MLB draft. So how did I come up with this list? Well, first of all, it is a three-tiered list. There, I'm going to give you three obvious um target prospect targets i'm going to give you four value targets and i'm going to give you three sleeper targets and all of the players i have chosen have all signed with their team so they have committed to be playing so they're not going to go back to college they're not going to do anything like that in fact interesting this year because the draft only had five rounds every player in this year's draft has signed with an mlb team now, it is possible because the checklist has not come out for Bowman Draft that some of the players that I mentioned in here may not end up with a card in the set. It would surprise me if they didn't, but maybe some of the sleepers, um, but it is possible. So I am guessing on the checklist here because the checklist has not been announced. And then finally, I did not consider pitchers for this list. The reason for that, pitchers generally tend to hold a little bit of less value. There are some great pitchers that were selected in this year's draft, and maybe we'll go over those at some other time. But for now, we're focused on the position players, and we are focused on people that were in the 2020 draft that should be featured in Bowman Draft 2020. So let's get right into my top three obvious players there's going to be spencer torkelson austin martin and heston jerstad and we're going to go into why each of these are players that you should be targeting so we'll dig a little bit deeper so let's start with spencer torkelson first of all was drafted by the detroit tigers he was drafted as a third baseman may not stay there at the major league level but that's where they drafted him at and he was the first overall pick so that's why he's an obvious pick for someone to be targeting but why was he the first overall pick First of all, he's a power hitting corner infield that hits for average, which is something that is so rare in today's game. It's almost like a lost art. In three college seasons, he had 54 home runs and batted 337 and was while playing for Arizona State. He is only 21 years old, but that is old enough to quickly progress through the minors. In fact, his major league... Um, estimated time of arrival is actually 2022 so it won't be long before we see him assuming that he continues to play like he did in college in the minors it should not be long before we see him at the major league level another thing to keep in mind out of all of the prospects in the minor leagues he is already ranked fourth overall out of all of the prospects that includes wander franco that includes J jason dominguez that includes bobby witt jr he is ranked higher than most of those players and he just got drafted back in june 
And then the other reason you're going to want to target Spencer Torkelson outside of the obvious first overall is he is part of a very strong Tigers farm system. They have one of the best farm systems in the entire um, the, the entire baseball universe and that franchise is in rebuilding mode. So they've been calling up players quickly. Um, and so you should see that that young nucleus that they have in the minors get up to the majors fairly quickly, very much like the Padres did here a couple years ago. So our next player that we're going to be targeting is going to be Austin Martin, not to be confused with the car, which is an Aston Martin. However, the way he plays will very much remind you of an Aston Martin. So a little bit about him. He was drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays as a shortstop, and he was the fifth overall pick. A lot of people felt he felt that he had fell a little bit in the draft. However, going into draft night, he was widely considered the best pure hitter in the 2020 draft class. He hit 392 and had a 486 on base per- on base percentage in 2019. Those are absurd numbers. And he was the reason they went on to win the uh, 2019 College World Series for Vanderbilt. His major league uh, estimated time of arrival, again, 2022. A very polished hitter is just a very mature hitter. And why is that? Well, he only strikes out 34 times and 260 at-bats in 2019. That is insane discipline for a player of, that was only 20 years old at the time. So 34 Ks and 268 at bats. That is so low compared to many of the players that have been coming up lately because strikeouts tend to be um, more accepted at the major league level these days. But people that can hit for contact and hit for power and get on base, very rare. So Austin Martin, definitely someone that you're going to want to look at. Also, on top of that, in the loaded Blue Jays system, which is another fantastic farm system in the majors, he will be the number one prospect. He's number two right now, but Nate Pearson moving on to the MLB team, he's still rated as their top prospect, but he will be pitching right out of the gates. And Austin Martin is already number two and is going to move to number one very quickly here as soon as the 2021 season starts for the major leagues. My third one is going to be Keston Jerstad. He was drafted by the Baltimore Orioles as an outfielder. He was drafted second overall, so that sounds like a big deal. However, a lot of people thought that the Baltimore Orioles reached a little bit for Jerstad. Now, I don't believe that to be true, and here's why. First of all, he's a left-handed power hitter, um, and he's been to two College World Series already. So he's played in big moments. He's played in clutch moments. Um, And the fact that he's a left-handed power hitter means that that's a little scarce in today's major league game and that is a premium premium plus for him second of all he's part of a very strong orioles farm system so a lot of these teams that haven't been doing very well lately they've been restocking in the minor leagues and the orioles are still rebuilding at the big league level which is going to give jurstad a very quick progression into the major leagues And keep in mind, he's only 21 years old. So by the time he gets there, let's say he's 22, 23, has his whole career in front of him, a very young player, a very polished player coming into the league. And he's already the number three prospect in the Orioles organization. And don't forget this, in three college seasons, he is a career 343 hitter and was on base at a 421 clip. And that includes... 37 home runs, and don't forget, he's got a little bit of speed as well. So definitely a five-tool player with the potential to come up in that Orioles organization, which is loaded with talent, and become uh, a very competitive team and be part of a core nucleus that could be very exciting here in a couple years. So now we're going to move on to my top four value players. Who are they going to be? Well, first will be Zach Veen, and then we have Ed Howard, Then we have Austin Wells and then Tyler Soderstrom, which we will dig into a little deeper right now. So first, let's start with Zach Veen. He was drafted by the Colorado Rockies. He was an outfielder and he was drafted ninth overall. Now, 
crazy thing, just drafted in June, already the Rockies' number one prospect. There is no one better in their farm system, and it's probably not even close. To be fair, the Rockies do not have the greatest farm system, but to just come out of a draft and be ranked number one right off the bat should tell you something about Zach Veen. The other thing about him, he is one of the most athletic players out of the 2020 draft class. He has a big 6'4 frame and is built into that 6'4 frame. He is not a tiny little skinny guy at all. Um, he was the top high school player, so he's a prep player, so he could grow even more. Um, and he was rated as the top position player out of high school in the entire draft. A lot of comparisons with draft experts keep going to Cody Bellinger. So that tall, lanky, power and contact hitter that can dominate a game, that can hit it to all different parts of the field, and it really has that IQ to be a smart player in the game. The other thing is, keep in mind, he's playing in Colorado. So with the baseball card hobby loving offensive stats, Colorado is only going to add to his power numbers, and he's still working into that power. Um, so he could become a perennial 40 home run player down the road. Now he's got a little bit of time to get there because he is young. He's a prep. I would probably think that he would show up in the 2023 season, probably maybe 2024. But if he rakes like he's like he raked in high school and comes out in the minors and moves up quickly, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in late 2022 or 2023. Then we have Ed Howard. Now, Ed Howard's an interesting one. Um, he was drafted by the Chicago Cubs as a, sh as a shortstop. He was the 16th overall pick in the draft, and he was the top-rated shortstop. He's only 19 years old, but he's got plenty of room for growth in the power department. Well, one of the knocks on him is that he's a more defensive-minded player first, which does not bode well for the baseball card hobby. However... He's still kind of small for his frame, so he's uh, he's got a lot of room to grow into the frame. And in the last part of the spring, before everything kind of got shut down, um, he had shown some power potential. So there's a glimpse that that power is there and he's building into his frame. Like I said, he's already rated as one of the top defensive uh, players in the 2020 class, and he is a spectacular shortstop who can make very good plays on defense. Now, what I, the reason I mentioned that, shortstop is the one position where defense kind of shines in the hobby. Think Ozzie Smith. Then the, his bat speed, and this is where I come back to that power thing. His bat speed in his prep class was ranked in the 94th percentile out of everyone in the nation. So that bat speed is insane. Once he grows into that frame a little bit, being coached by coaches that are in the minor leagues, they're going to really work on that power. And I do believe that you're going to see a shortstop that is a defensive wizard that can possibly hit anywhere between 15 and 20 home runs a season, which at that shortstop position would be a fantastic offensive shortstop that can also play defense. The other thing to keep in mind, shortstop premium position in the major leagues. He, um, Ed Howard has one of the highest IQs in the draft, a very smart player, understands the game a lot, and that is a requirement for the shortstop position. You have to understand how the defense is setting up, and he understands all of that, and that is such a premium at the major league level. If you add that with home runs, a, a very low strikeout rate, which Ed Howard has had throughout his young career, I think you'll see that this turns into one of these dynamic, interesting players. I think the Cubs got a really good pick here at 16th overall for Ed Howard. Now, our next one, we're going to Austin Wells, who was drafted by the New York Yankees at the position of catcher, the draft position of 28th overall. Now, Austin Wells is an interesting player. He batted 357 with a 476 on base percentage in two college seasons. Absolutely dominated everybody that he played with. And the big thing that makes me think that he is a great value pick is the Yankees love offensive minded catchers. In fact, they've even selected Austin Wells twice. They selected him back in 2018 and then he went back to college. So they drafted him again in 2020. And if you look at the history of catchers that the Yankees have, they know how to develop offensive minded catchers. 
he is also a left-handed batter, and he's got fantastic plate discipline. Only 57 strikeouts and 351 at-bats in his last season in college. That is a very low, very good strikeout to uh, at-bat ratio, especially for someone of his age. The next thing is, is he's 21 years old and he should move quickly through the farm system. He has a 2023 estimated time of arrival to the big leagues. And if you continue to see any catchers on the Yankees, um, if you see any of them start to lack in the offensive categories at catcher, don't be surprised to see Austin Wells even sooner, especially if he keeps hitting with at the contact rate that he hits at. Finally, there's a possibility that he gets moved away from catcher over to first base because he is a little bit of a defensive liability behind the plate. Not a very good framer, uh, maybe doesn't know how to call a game, and his arm is a little underwhelming from the home plate to second base. So that's one of his weaknesses, but that won't matter at all in the baseball card hobby. But I could see the Yankees moving him over to first base, which if you don't have to put up with the rigors of everyday catching, that only helps his offensive stats because he'll be in the lineup a lot more. Um, he'll stay fresh a lot longer. And so that is another thing to keep an eye out with Austin Wells. If they move him over to first base or some other position, his offensive numbers should actually go up from what you're already seeing here, which are eye-popping numbers. Finally, we have Tyler Soderstrom. Soderstrom was selected by the Oakland Athletics. He is also a catcher, and he was drafted 26th overall in the first round. Now, that's kind of low. Um, I think there was about 38 total picks when you talk about competitive balance picks that happened at the end of draft one. However, he was rated as the top high school catcher in the 2020 draft. Another thing is he's got great pedigree. His his father was selected as a first round pick in the 1993 draft as a pitcher. So he has grown up around baseball, which as we've learned in the hobby recently with all of the, thank Ken Griffey Jr., thank Fernando Tatis Jr., Ronald Acuna Jr., a lot of juniors and a lot of players, think Bo Bichette, Kevin Biggio, and a lot of these players that grew up around baseball and had the opportunity to be in some very good young, from, from a young age, being some very good programs for baseball. Tyler Soderstrom falls into that category. Another thing, we have another left-handed batter with a fantastic plate discipline. He's got 57 strikeouts and 351 at-bats, very similar to Austin Wells. And then he's only 18 years old and he's already ranked on scouting reports like on MLB as a 60 hitter. Now, here's how those rankings work. Basically, the top score you can get is 80. A 60, most people don't have. That is considered a plus. A 70 would, would be considered a plus plus, and 80 would be considered like really good. Uh, almost no one gets an 80, even at the major league level. So he's only 18 years old, and he is one of the highest rated hitters in all of the 2020 draft, according to scouting reports. So he's a plus hitter, can hit it to all different uh, parts of the field. He can hit for power. He can hit for average. A very, very good player. And he's already played in high leverage situations. He was one of the top players on Team USA in 2019. He hit 364 with 10 RBIs in just nine games for Team USA back in 2019. Just a fantastic player overall. The fact that he fell to 26th is somewhat shocking to me. However, when he's in Bowman Draft, probably won't be going for that much. He'll probably be able to find parallels fairly easily. And this is one player that I would definitely get on early before his cards rise here in about one, two, three years as he starts rising up the top 100 prospect list. Now for my top three sleeper players. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into the following three players. Daniel Cabrera, Carson Tucker, and Jake Vogel. So let's figure out a little bit more about these and why they are my sleepers. First of all, we've got Daniel Cabrera. He was also selected by the Detroit Tigers. He's an outfielder. But he was selected 62nd overall by the Detroit Tigers. He was ranked as one of the top college bats in the 2020 draft. So a fantastic hitter, 
Um, and as you can see by his numbers, he batted 305 with a 392 on base per- percentage in three college seasons. Now, a lot of the experts that took a look at the draft, they said this may have been the steal of the draft at pick number 62. A hand injury in, 2009, uh, in 2019 slid him down on the draft boards a little bit. He was universally ranked as a round one talent, and then he fell because of the hand in- injury all the way down to pick number 62. And Daniel Cabrera, when you read more on him, is a very focused player and a very driven player. And one of the first things he said coming out of the draft was, I think I'm going to surprise a lot of people. And he has been working out. He talked about his workout regimen. He's a laser focused player that has and has already made claim to, I want to be a Hall of Famer. He has his goals. He has his vision. He has his way that he wants to get there. And the fact that he went down to round 262, I think Daniel Cabrera is going to start playing with a chip on his shoulder right out of the blocks. He is 22 years old, which is a little bit old for a player that just got drafted, but obviously that also is going to mean he has a mature plate approach, and most people have him on track to be hitting the major leagues by 2023. Don't be surprised, though, that with the Tigers, that you'll see with that rebuilding system that they're going to call those players up a little bit quicker to get them all playing together on the major league team. So don't be surprised if you see him in 2022, which would leave him at the age of 24, which is still very young for a player. But I think Daniel Cabrera is going to be a real special player, play with a chip on his shoulder, probably one of the most mature players in the draft, and also one of those players that is driven to succeed in his set goals and the, the minor hand injury he had, he should not have slid down to pick number 62. I think you're going to see his cards be relatively inexpensive, and I would definitely recommend to pick them up while they are cheap. My next player is going to be Carson Tucker from the Cleveland Indians. He's another shortstop. He was actually drafted in round one. He was 23rd overall, but it was a little bit of a mysterious pick by the Cleveland Indians. A little bit about him. He is the brother of Cole Tucker, who is on the Pirates right now, but he's a little bit stronger. So if you've watched Cole Tucker, they actually kind of are similar. But uh, Carson Tucker, not to be confused with Tucker Carlson, please. And the other thing about Cole Tucker is he's 18 years old and was already considered one of the best contact hitters in the draft. He does not hit for a lot of power yet, but he is only 18. However, he is one of those players that hits at a high contact, low strikeout ratio, which is always a recipe for success moving through the minor league system. He is six foot two. Keep that in mind. He's only 18 years old. So he has potential to build more power, although he's never going to be a true power hitter. He's a shortstop. So again, I go back to that. Can he hit 10, 15, 20 home runs a year? Can he score 80 to 100 runs? Is he fast? Those are the things that you look for in a shortstop. And you look at that arm. Does he have a good arm over the first? He's got all of those things and more. And if he builds into that six foot two frame at all, he could be one of the shortstops that hits 20 home runs a season and just lights up the field. He's got a fantastic personality. And don't forget that the Indians... They have a rich history of developing great shortstops. Go look at Francisco Lindor. Go look at how he developed through the system and think that the Indians might do something just the same with Carson Tucker. And then finally, he was one of the highest rising stocks in the 2020 draft. Leading up to the draft, he was not ranked very high. Then he had a fantastic early season before COVID hit and a lot of people started taking note and he rose up those draft boards higher than most every other player that was selected in the 2020 draft. So the scouts were on it and you should be on it as well for his cards. I think we're going to see these cards as well being fairly inexpensive. These are ones that if you can find that parallel, you can find that auto, get it cheap now. Definitely, definitely hold on to it for a couple years. See what happens. See if that investment pays off. Finally, our 10th and final player is going to be Jake Vogel, who was drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers, 100th overall in round number three of the draft. Now, why do I pick Jake Vogel? First of all, he is one of the fastest players in the draft, if not the fastest player. 
he had a 70 scouting report grade, so a plus plus on speed, which is something I believe no other player in the draft had. So just lightning quick. And the Dodgers developmental system is great at developing power in players. Again, go back to Cody Bellinger, you go back to Corey Seager, um, and you go back to some of these players that maybe were fast and were great hitters but didn't hit for power. The Dodgers developmental system developed these players into players that can hit 20, 30. You look at Cody Bellinger, even 40 home runs, and they're going to do the same thing with Jake Vogel, and I'll explain why in a minute. The other thing is he's... Along with that speed, he has a very strong arm profile uh, to become a top-tier defensive center fielder, which, again, at center field, defense is almost as important as defense is at shortstop. And so when you look at Jake Vogel, he does project to be a very good center fielder, which is something that is a premium at the major league level. Plus, with that speed, spectacular catches. If you look at Kyle Lewis, part of the reason why he got popular and is becoming a superstar out in Seattle is a lot of that goes to the defensive catches that he's making. So I think Jake Jake Vogel kind of falls into that category a little bit. And then the other thing, being signed at round three, 100th overall, the Dodgers ended up inking him for $1 million over his slot value. So if you know how the slot value works in the draft, if you claim someone in the third round, they're worth a certain amount of money. And you can only spend so much money based upon each round. So that's what a slot value is. And the Dodgers underpaid for a couple of their higher picked players in the first couple rounds and then signed Jake Vogel a a million times more than the slot value, um, which is the value that he should have got where he was picked in the draft. What that means is that suggests that the Dodgers are heavily invested in him and that they do see a lot of potential there. And the Dodgers farm system is one of the best farm systems year in and year out. And so definitely, definitely the Dodgers see potential there. And I see potential there too. Now, this is the one card that I do think we might not see Jake Vogel's card in Bowman Draft. I hope we do. If you do, definitely one that you want to get in on. And then finally, how much did the Dodgers like him? They added him to the 60-player development pool this year, which is after players were drafted in COVID, they did have a team of 60 players, kind of like the minor leagues. Uh, But if you think about how many people are actually in the minor league organizations for each team, um, there are plenty of them. And Jake Vogel, fresh off getting drafted in the third round, was invited to that pool. So the Dodgers are trying to develop are trying to develop him quickly. And I think Jake Vogel is definitely going to be one of those deep sleepers that you get in the third round. These cards will probably be had for next to nothing. And if you can get an autograph, if he ends up being on the autograph checklist, definitely a player that I would go seek out and get them while they're cheap. So let me know. What players you're excited about for 2020 Bowman Draft? Again, we have Bowman Draft First Edition, which I believe is going to be released by Tops today. And then the main set will come out on December 7th. And I hope that you guys will get in on some Bowman Draft this year. It's a hobby-only release, but it's one of my favorite releases of the year. So throw over to first, hit that like button if you like these videos. Be sure to subscribe because we do investing advice and hobby advice all the time on here. We do breaks, we do set guides and reviews, you name it. Uh, we lo- I love to do it for you guys. And then finally, let me know in the comments below if you are getting in on Bowman Draft and the players that you are targeting as well so we can have a great discussion and be informed about the set before it actually comes out. So with that, guys, I'm going to sign off. I hope that you are having good luck on your personal pack polls. I hope you're being good to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors. And until next time, take care.